For Crema Media's Engineering News, I'm Samantha Muolman. South Africa's manufacturing sector has been contributing less and less to the country's GDP, with contributions dropping by over 33% in the last decade. BMGI senior consultant Dimitri Markolidis joins me in studio to discuss why he thinks this is happening. Welcome, Dimitri. Thank you. You partly attribute this statistic to the notion that innovation in South Africa's manufacturing sector does not result in effective commercialization. Can you elaborate on this? Well, yes. I think what what is happening uh, in South Africa is that we have uh, development of very good R&D, research and development, and there's a lot of money that goes into developing research and developing technologies, technologies out of R&D. Uh, but these technologies never ever actually get adapted to form any products, uh, end user products that can actually be shipped and exported, that can add value and grow the GDP of the country. Okay, well, what can the manufacturing sector do to bridge innovation and commercialization in South Africa? What needs to happen is uh, we need to start becoming more adaptive in our style of thinking. We need to start taking uh, a lot of the technologies and adapt them to suit it to our environment, to our culture and also to our uh, manufacturing environment in South Africa so that we actually start becoming more uh, competitive in producing products at lower costs. So um, adaptive, and what, what I mean by adaptive means uh, we sometimes have to build the infrastructure around an idea or a technology to get a product or service out there. Uh, and even though we spend a lot of time developing an idea in isolation, we don't develop the infrastructure around it that we need. And I'll give you a, a very simple example. If you take Thomas Edison, Thomas Edison is well known and famed for developing the light bulb. In fact, he, didn't, he never invented the light bulb. What he did was he developed the infrastructure around the light bulb. He looked at ways of improving the dynamo in terms of giving constant voltage to allow better uh, luminosity. He created um, seven or eight other patents that would make the product work better in the field. And so automatically there was an uptake of the, of the light bulb. So I think that's what we also failing a lot is that we're not adaptive in taking these technologies that we develop on the R&D level and adapting them for the market. There's a big gap and that's where uh, we're losing a lot of opportunity. You emphasize the importance of increasing competitiveness and attracting foreign interest. What are the first steps South Africa should be taking to ensure that this happens? I think what we need to really look at is look at our t local technologies and look at what our target markets are or what they are, what we'd like them to be, and, and look at our strengths, and then see how can we adapt ourselves to integrate technologies that can uh, set us apart in producing cost-competitive products. Uh, and, and that's very, the, very much the very first step that we need to look at. BMGI offers a solution called the D4 Model for Innovation. Can you tell me more about this product offering? Sure. So. The D4 model works uh, very simply. We saw there was an opportunity that um, a lot of people were developing ideas, uh, creating ideas, but these ideas never uh, took to ground or never resulted in any fructitious fruit, if you like, at the end of the day. And the reason for that was there was this big gap between developing the idea, the ideation part, and actually then creating it into a concept that actually gets tested, piloted, that it becomes a commercializable product. So the D4 process works as follows. We start off by defining the innovation opportunity. A lot of the times people start uh, brainstorming uh, solutions around a problem of what they believe the problem is, not what it actually is. So what we do in the fine phase is we look at what are the met needs and unmet needs of a market, and we define this innovation opportunity, this gap. Once we've defined this gap, we then move into the second phase. And the second phase is called the discover phase. So we will then focus our brainstorming and thinking around how do we solve the problem that we've just identified in the defined phase, this innovation opportunity. And we come up with all these ideas and we start ranking these ideas and creating, moving to the next step, which is the, the develop phase, developing concepts now that uh, we're going to actually action uh, and demonstrate uh, and pilot and test to make sure that we actually can meet this innovation opportunity. So you can see the whole D4 model is after developing the concept, we would then pilot and, and, and test it. But the whole D4 model is around this innovation opportunity. 
uh, it doesn't just start uh, doesn't just start in the middle of anywhere. It starts off with meeting a specific goal, meeting on how can we reduce this gap or how can we eliminate this gap and and produce something that's that's really innovative but also commercial uh, commercializable. Okay. Should South Africa not heed your warning um, about the manufacturing sector and retain the status quo? What do you think would happen to the sector? Well. I've got fears that you know already we can see that there's been a massive decline, uh, and manufacturing is is the, is the main driver uh, of what creates GDP in our in, a, in our economy. And my fear is that if we're not going to be adapt adaptive enough in taking uh, new technologies, bringing them locally, and making them more, more cost competitive, what's going to happen is we're going to trail the bricks. Uh, really, what we're going to do is uh, we will never be able to to meet or exceed expectations in the brick party. We'll always be the ones trailing behind and, and not moving forward fast enough. Thank you, Dimitri. Pleasure. That was BMGI Senior Consultant Dimitri Markalides on the need to bridge innovation and commercialization to save South Africa's manufacturing sector.